Hello my lovelies, welcome to my channel. Here we are finally doing the Saturn and Jupiter conjunction. Um, so we're going to do this uh, step by step. I'm going to go into what this entails for everyone. Uh, then we're going to go into where the placements in your house are going to be activated, uh, what you're going to be working through for 2021. Then we're going to get into uh, your forecast, your predictions for 2021 for all 12 signs. Uh, sorry, for all 12 months, not signs. <laughs> um, I do want to apologize, Aquarius, if I'm looking tired, exhausted, um, my voice raspier than usual. Uh, it's been a very, very long day. I've been doing all these videos. They're all about 40, 30 minutes. You guys know I like to try to keep my videos very short as much as possible, uh, especially when we're doing readings because it does take a lot of energy from me. Um, but I really wanted to put these videos out for you guys. So here we are. Okay, so what this means... Um, a lot of people don't really understand the major transformation that's happening and has been happening uh, the past couple of years up until now. Now, there is a massive change and shift that we're going into. Now, when we're talking about Jupiter and Saturn, uh, it usually roughly takes about 20 to 30 years for it to go to each single zodiac sign. Um, so with that being noted, uh, the conjunctions of Jupiter and Saturn uh, in elements, okay, we're talking about Earth, air, fire, and water, uh, takes roughly about 200 years. So for the first time in 200 years, we are going from the Earth element, Jupiter and Saturn have been sitting in Capricorn, which is an Earth element. Uh, previously to that, it had been going into the other Earth elements, it's been a transition of 200 years. So now we are at a pivotal moment where Saturn and Jupiter are transitioning into Aquarius. This is an air sign. This is the shifting of energy. Now, if we look to the past, excuse me. Um, now, if we look to the past, uh, when we look at the placement of Jupiter and Saturn conjunctioning in the water element, that was the whole era of the Renaissance. That was when poetry, when painting was really pretty much taking center stage. This was where intuition, uh, this was where, <clears throat> where creativity and emotional connection and depthness was really explosive in that era. Uh, so that's, again, um, as well as travel back in the days, uh, travel was mostly done uh, through boats and water, obviously. So again, that was the water element. Now, when we had Jupiter and Saturn conjunctioning in the fire element, um, that's when we experienced wars, colonization. Uh, this is all to do with taking uh, by aggression, right? Taking like taking with force. Uh, so that's when we experienced the wars colonization, like I said, moving forward to the 1800s up until now, it's been in the earth family. Uh, so this is all to do with building. This is all to do with like heavy machinery. Uh, like I said, the building, uh, the growth and expansion of businesses and the negative side, uh, control, right? Because the element of earth uh, has to do with control. So again, uh, now we're going and I'm sure you guys have noticed the major changes that have been happening these past couple of months when we're getting ready for Saturn and Jupiter to move out of the Earth element or the Earth family and it's going into Aquarius. So what does this mean for you, Aquarians? Major transformation. Um, this is we're going into the Aquarian era. Uh, like I said, Jupiter and Saturn are going into your element, the element of air. This is all to do with uh, science. This is all to do with higher learning. This is all to do with thinking of the future and thinking of ahead um, and really futuristic, right? It's all about making those, uh, making progress for the betterment of humanity. So again, uh, like I said, these past couple of months, uh, Jupiter in Jupiter and Saturn in Capricorn um, the shadow side of that was like people trying to manipulate other people 
or people stepping on other people to get to a higher elevation. Now with your energy, Aquarius, you're very connected to humanity and you're very connected to, um, you know, the betterment of all. So again, we go from this chaos going into this healing phase and like I said, expansion in anything that has to do with computers, higher learning, uh, for some of you guys changing, completely changing careers, others of you uh, starting your own business, others of you really working from, if you're going from working an office job from nine to five, for some of you guys, there may be changes in the workplace where you're now literally working full time from home. So again, that's all of the Aquarian type of energy that we're going to be experiencing for the next coming 200 years. Again, keep in mind, it takes about 200 years for Saturn and Jupiter to go into another element. So again, it's going to be there for quite a while in the air family anyways. Um, so with that being said, uh, the exciting thing is that you are living proof right now of these major changes. Your kids or probably the kids of your kids are not even going to get to experience this type of shift uh, because, like I said, it takes 200 years. So, um, all right. So how is this going to affect you, Aquarians? Well, obviously, majorly. <clears throat> Jupiter and Saturn is conjunctioning in your sign. This is your first house. Anything you've ever dreamt of can happen, but you have to take self-responsibility. That's what Saturn is all about. Yes, it gives you all the opportunities. It gives you all the uh the push that you need to do and have breakthroughs happen but again jupiter's expansion it's about thinking of like the moment and seizing the moment and saturn is there uh to tell you are you being responsible aquarius are you putting effort are you putting energy towards what you're wanting to make happen because if you're not and you're just sitting back saturn is not going to give you those blessings so again Saturn is a difficult uh, energy to deal with sometimes. Um, so again, taking responsibility. This is in your first house. Uh, this is how you look and how you're perceived. So for a lot of you Aquarians, you're going to be experiencing getting a lot of notoriety. For others of you, this could represent getting a lot of attention from colleagues, from people that respect you, from people that uh, are going to start to admire you. There's this aura about you. It's like you are going to be center stage. Whenever this happens in your first house, <clears throat> there is like this major focus on you, Aquarius. Uh, so again, uh, those of you guys that have this, uh, that have Aquarius in your ascendant are going to feel this like 10 times stronger. Uh, so just be prepared. If you have your ascendant in Aquarius or your moon, uh, as well, it's going to really, really be impacting every single area of your life. Now, for some of you guys, especially with your moon in Aquarius, body transformations. Um, for those of you guys that are trying to lose weight, now is the time to really make that happen. Why? Because Jupiter's there to give you the blessings, the results. Saturn, however, is about weight. So for some of you guys trying to lose weight, you may lose weight very quickly, uh, but at the same time, you may not be as tight as you would want. So Saturn is there. Saturn is about control, remember. So for some of you guys, heavy lifting is the way to go. Why? Because you're going to be dropping pounds quick, but you're also going to be uh, blessed in the sense of keeping it tight, if you know what I mean. Uh, so all to do with, um, <clears throat> like I said, uh, lifting, uh, heavy lifting. Uh, Saturn is going to be there to help you to get the end results. Now, Aquarius rules the ankles, the calves, and the shins, I believe. So be careful for those of you guys that are daredevils, for those of you guys that like to do like crazy extreme sports. Be careful around this time because you are more likely to get injured in your, um, in the body uh, that your sign rules. So again, that's your ankles, basically your leg. Uh, your ankles, your shins, and your calves, uh, you're more, I guess, like the likelihood of you getting injured are very high, especially for those, like I said, that could have a tendency of being reckless. Just be careful. Um, now, Uranus enters Taurus sign. Um, this is to do with your money and finances. Uranus brings ways to make money in a very different way. So for some of you guys, this could be like you have a job, right, from nine to five, 
but you're also making money on the side. For some of you guys, you may start to experience a massive uh, income coming in from that side job uh, because your anus is brings a lot of surprises um, or unexpected turn of events for some of you guys changing careers and that's why the changing of careers happens for you guys um, making calculated risk can be beneficial for you so for those of you guys that are into investments or are into putting money in stocks or anything like that now is the time to do that because you're going to be very blessed. But always keep in mind that it's going to be beneficial to you if you make sure that these are calculated risks, okay? Uh, don't just jump into something and be like, oh, I'm going to you know, kick ass in this and be ignorant about it um, and go into it blindfolded uh, because, again, Saturn is about make, like making sure that you did your research, that you know what you're doing and you know what you're investing in to be able to get those benefits, okay? All right, so your first and fourth house, personal struggles, trying to become more independent. Uh, you can do this, okay? Uh, for those of you guys that are trying to become self-independent with your own business, for those of you guys that have been challenged the past couple of years, now is the time to really put that effort and what I mean by effort is like, don't think that your hard work, like just, you know, is coming to its end. No, if anything, it's quite the opposite. Uh, it's kind of like that saying with more responsibility or with more power comes more responsibility. That's exactly Saturn's energy. So what they're telling you here, Aquarius, is put basically put like really put the effort in what you're wanting to achieve if you have to go the extra mile, do it. Uh, even at work, if there are certain things that other people are not doing, go the extra mile. Why? You're very likely to get promoted. You're very likely to get more responsibility, yes, but a higher paying job. You're more likely for your superiors to really admire the work that you're doing because, again, this placement is happening in your first house. So it's all about self and you, right? So, again, uh, put that extra work, it's going to pay out in the end. <clears throat> now, fourth house, um, the fourth house also rules the mother figure. If you're into astrology, fourth house always represents the feminine or the mother figure, and the tenth house represents the father figure. Your fourth house is being activated, and this rules over mother type of energy. So personal struggles may arise. Uh, important to maintain boundaries. So for some of you guys, it could be a situation that unfolds where there is like a disagreement or some type of almost falling off with your mother what they're telling you here is that it is important to maintain that respect even if they don't agree with you it's okay to agree uh to disagree and having the respect of those that gave you life is going to be very important and you're going to be tested for this year in regards to a mother situation so just be mindful about that. Now also, um, let's see, what else? <sighs> Big changes in your first house and fourth house, changes in initiation, changes, and how or where you live. Uh, family situations may also change. Uh, this could be living arrangements. This could be living situations. This could be you relocating. This could be you thinking about relocating. For others of you, a situation surrounding the family or your family dynamic uh, may take some of your attention. Uh, why? Because there is something that has to do with Jupiter expansion growth as well as Saturn, and Saturn is karma. So these are karmic connections, obviously, your family having to work through certain situations uh, that imply the connection with siblings or family dynamic. Nonetheless, this is for the positive because it is about healing. Remember that. All right, my lovelies, I hope you like this. Now let's get into your forecast. Let's see what Spirit has for you guys for this coming 2021. Spirits, please give me 12 sets of cards to represent all 12 months for Aquarius, Sun, Moon, and Rising. What is unfolding before them? What's coming towards them? What opportunities or challenges may be arising? for all these 12 months spirits what are the messages for aquarius sun moon and rising for 2021 yeah aquarius i can tell you this 
this energy is not going to be easy, you guys. I feel that for some of you, in the beginning of the year, you're going to be really challenged. Um, <clears throat> and I'm telling you, <laughs> because I just experienced uh, the Saturn and Jupiter conjunction in my sign of Capricorn. So in the beginning, it's going to be rough. It's going to be like you're being pulled towards different directions. As long as you keep your focus and determination on what really matters or what you're trying to manifest, I guarantee you by the middle of the year, you start to see those results. You start to see uh, that expansion, those opportunities that perhaps you didn't even know were there. Um, a lot of blessings are going to be bestowed upon you and your person. You'll get through it. You got this, Aquarius. All right, let's see. <laughs> I'm sorry, you guys, if I look like shit. I'm so tired. All right, so we have January here. February. March. April. May, June, July, mm, August, September, October. This is so funny, you guys. I cannot have, like, this is so funny. Okay, I'll tell you guys why in a bit. So, what was I saying just when I was shuffling the cards? that it's going to be kind of rough in the beginning, right? And then in the middle of the year, blessings. <laughs> That's exactly what they're showing me here. Let me put the water here. Okay. All right. So for January, you have the emperor and the six of swords. For some of you guys, there is travel involved. For others of you, you may be traveling. Uh, this could be in connection with career or with your finances for others of you uh, the emperor is all about structure this is in my entrepreneur type of energy but i feel that this is you going towards some type of manifestation or some type of like stability that you're looking for because the emperor is stability um this is all to do with i feel this is you chasing a passion or chasing a certain life um, for the month of January, this could be you traveling to see someone, uh, or like I said, a, in connection with career, uh, traveling may be involved here very heavily for the month of January. Now going into February, we have the three of cups and the wheel of fortune. A lot of playtime here. I feel that February is going to be a very positive month for you guys. Uh, for a lot of you guys, really uh, balancing or picking or choosing in regards to love and romance. The Wheel of the Year talks about striking luck when it comes to the Three of Cups. So the Three of Cups is a celebratory type of energy. This is also to do with uh, having time, excuse me, having time to play, having time to relax and enjoy life. Um, I feel that you're going to be very social for the month of February. A lot of you guys really uh, being around friends and just enjoying <clears throat> enjoying yourselves. But I feel very highly like love is around you or for some of you guys, love is coming towards you or you're going towards love and you're like dead on, like focused on what you want in a partner or knowing exactly what it is that you want or even for some of you guys knowing exactly who you want in your life now for the month of march we have here judgment and the page of cups so for some of you guys i feel that january and february you're making plans about where you want 2021 to go and for a lot of you guys manifestations of commitments and career commitments are going to be taking center stage. Now, around March, I see a person coming back around. You have the Judgment card and the Page of Cups. This is a person that perhaps is water energy, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio. Uh, but this is also a love offering from the past coming back around or wanting to reconnect or wanting to rekindle this connection. What Spirit is telling you here is 
Whatever hasn't worked out in the past, do not entertain it anymore, Aquarius. You're going into uh, your power. You're going into a new life. Uh, anything that has not panned out up until now will not pan out for you. Why? Because the person you were in 2020 is no longer the person that you're going to be in 2021. And that is something for you to really take acknowledgement of that on a deeper level. Now, this could be a person that you greatly cared for. This could be a person that perhaps you hoped that they would come back around, but deep down inside, you felt like there was no practical way of them coming back. Well, they're coming back. But what they're telling you here is that spirit is guiding you to elevate you to the next cycle in your life. And the next cycle in your life has to do with growth, has to do with expansion, has to do with setting the seeds or <clears throat> really planting the seeds of your future. And whatever you left in 2020 has no room for you in 2021. That was deep, you guys. All right. So for the month of April, we have here the strength card and the hermit. So this is you really internalizing your passions, your desires. This is you trying to figure out um, if you're passionate about a certain situation. For some of you guys, could be this ex you're dealing with. Uh, trying to figure out if it's worth giving it another go. I feel that with the hermit, you're internalizing this and spirit is trying to guide you to show you. You've been through so much Aquarius. You have expanded. You have grown with this strength card. You have got yourself out of the dumps. You have rebuilt yourself. 2021 is about rebranding yourself. So rebranding can signify a multitude of things. There could be transformative energy on a physical aspect. There could be transformation in regards to emotional aspect. And for others of you, this is finding financial stability um, and building on solid foundations. So again, do not entertain the past. It will only hold you back. Now for the month of May here, we have the Eight of Cups and Six of Pentacles. You're walking away from a situation that is no longer serving you. You are walking away and no longer uh, lowering your vibration or allowing other people to bring you down. You are more confident in yourself to walk away from what doesn't serve you anymore. For some of you guys, you may be walking towards an earth sign, Aqu uh, not Aquarius, sorry, Taurus, Capricorn, Virgo type of energy. I feel that um, this is a very balanced type of connection or a very balanced opportunity that's coming in for you in regards to love and romance. Now for the month of June, we have here the Five of Swords and the Page of Wands. For some of you guys, especially those of you guys that have children, you may be dealing with rebellious children. Uh, this is, uh, they're showing me kind of like the teenage years, but for some of you guys, uh, this could be a 21 year old that is just starting to act up. Uh, this is all to do with ego. For some of them, this is just crying for attention. They're trying to spend more time with you. They're trying to feel um, more connected to you, even if they get it just through getting the rise out of you. Uh, so again, children is going to be very important for you for the month of June. Uh, taking the time to really spend quality time with your children. For those of you guys that don't have children, uh, this could just symbolize uh, you dealing with a situation that is connected to children. For some of you guys, it could be dealing with the partner that has children, uh, where they're not really trying to make it obvious for some uh, that... <clears throat> It could be a situation almost like I'm feeling more like the person is trying to not be quick into bringing you around their children. Do not get offended by this Aquarius. Be respectful in that sense. Or this could be you not wanting to introduce a new person that you're dealing with um, to your children because you're very protective. Again, they must understand that. Nonetheless, I feel that there is going to be arguments arising in the month of June but it has more to do with pride. My advice, just be loving, approach the situation in a loving way so that they can understand. Now for the month of July, we have here 
the Queen of Pentacles and the Four of Wands. For some of you guys solidifying a connection with an Earth energy, Taurus, Capricorn, Virgo. For others of you, commitment may be involved here. Uh, some type of engagement, some type of commitment, some type of wanting to build for the future. For some of you guys, this could be moving in with an Earth energy or with a person that is very connected to Earth element. Doesn't have to be their sun sign. It could be their moon or their rising. This is an individual that is very self, uh, self-reliant. This is a person that is very self-independent. I feel that you are really looking towards them to want to build something. I I'm almost feeling like a sense of security and not in a financial way. I feel that this is a person that you're going to be connecting with on a soul level. So when they talk about soul type of connections, this is a predestined connection. This is someone that you may already be dealing with, Aquarius. You may already know this person. This may person may be in your uh, in your circle of friends or in your circle, uh, someone that you've you know uh, dealt with in the past. I don't want to say in regards to love, but I feel that this person has been in the picture for quite a while. And you're basically the month of July taking initiative towards them or making it official or not holding back anymore and trying to manifest a long-term connection here. You definitely do have here the four of wands. So for some of you guys, it could just represent that you're walking towards more stable financial freedom. For some of you guys, this is purchasing home, uh, purchasing a home or purchasing your first home or purchasing some type, purchasing some type of property. Uh, that is going to be very beneficial for you financially. <clears throat> now, for the month of August here, we have the Two of Wands and the Sun card. All right, so I know a lot of the times Aquarius are like, what? No, when we're talking about commitment. But you guys see here in the month of uh, July, in the month of July, there is some type of stability uh, manifesting for you in regards to love and romance. I feel that for the month of, <clears throat> what is this, July, August, for the month of August, yeah, for the month of August, there is a connection that happens. I feel like this is you guys just taking it to the next level. I feel that this is a this is a relationship that has been like brewing for some of you because what they're telling me here is like Aquarius has been after this person. That's what I'm hearing. So I don't know if it's a person that maybe in the past, maybe it's a friend, maybe in the past, like they've been dating someone and you just didn't have the opportunity or you were too shy or you felt like they wouldn't be interested. But there is a shift happening here where, again, remember Jupiter and Saturn are in your first house. This is self. This is self-worth as well. So this could be something that you're kind of shifting your energy and you are being more confident in yourself or believing more in yourself. And you're like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to go for it. I'm not holding back. And then boom, they are actually interested in you. And it just goes to the next level very quickly. For others of you, this is a blessing in regards to finances where uh, for some of you guys, this could be a partnership coming in, a partnership that is going to help you take your business to the next level. With the Sun card, uh, they're definitely giving you the green light uh, for the month of September uh, to take whatever opportunities are coming to you and make them happen. Do not hesitate. Do not put it in the back burner. Do not procrastinate. Take action is going to be very important for you. Now, for the month of, what is this, October, November, no, sorry, that was August, September, October, November, December, okay, September, sorry. All right, so for September, we have here the Ace of Pent. I have a lot of, like, pentacles for you guys. <coughs> I feel you guys are going to be heavily influenced with Earth people. Uh, so what I mean by that, a lot of people coming into your life that are going to be of the Earth element, Taurus, Capricorn, Virgo type of energy. For some of you guys, partnerships with these individuals, people that are very business savvy. For others of you, just coins coming in for you guys. Uh, the Ace of Pentacles, this is a new beginning, a new path. If you can, oops, wrong one. If you can see here clearly, we have the Ace of Pentacles, right? And there's like a pathway, there's a road 
there is a new opportunity to solidify a new path, a new lifestyle, a new beginning for you. With the moon card here, the moon is all to do with hidden, right? The subconscious, the, the deep down, deep inside you, Aquarius. But if you look closely at this moon, there is a sun behind it. And the sun brings clarity. It brings insight. So this is you becoming self-aware of your hidden desires. Or this is uh, really connecting intuitively to making business decisions that you're going to implement implement or add or pay attention to your intuition that are going to you're going to be hitting them on the mark basically so what they're saying here is that for the month of september a lot of new beginnings coming for you for some of you guys this could be travel uh this could be deciding to move uh to start a new life or to start a new um a new beginning this could be moving because of career this could be moving because of love for some of you guys <clears throat> now for the month of October, we have here the two of swords and the two of cups. So the two of swords is that of not wanting to see things from a clear perspective or refusing to see things for what they are. With the two of cups, I feel that for some of you guys, there is almost like this feeling. And, and let me just say this. You see these two cards? The pentacles is in a circular position, right? Then we have the moon. Then we have the two of cups, which the, the moon is highlighting. Then the two of swords. So it's almost like for some of you guys, you're going to be very drawn to an individual that is very connected to the moon or to the intuition, to their intuition. For some of you guys, even connecting with the person that could be very psychic. Um, with the two of cups and the two of swords, I feel that you're going to be hesitant about really allowing a person to get to know you like deep down who you really are. This could be, uh, for the month of October, having to deal with situations or past traumas in regards to relationships, because I'm almost sensing like, you're feeling loved, you're feeling understood, you're feeling you're feeling very secure when we're talking about romantically. But then the two of swords is like you're questioning or wondering when is this going to fall apart for some of you guys. Uh, and I feel that this has a lot to do with trauma from the past. So you may have to be you may actually be tested in the month of October in regards to fears and insecurities when we're talking about partnerships, you guys. The best advice I can give you in that situation is whenever we catch ourselves questioning is this too good to be true or when we find ourselves like waiting or hoping for the worst to happen so that we can be like, I wasn't crazy, I knew it was going to happen. This is all to do with insecurities. So when you find yourself in the month of October feeling that way, my advice is is question why you're questioning this connection or why you're starting to take a certain energy from the past where you start to pull away because you're scared of allowing people to see the real you or to really connect with someone on an emotional level. Uh, what they're telling me here is that this connection, I feel like for some of you guys, you already know who this person is. For others of you, depending on your placement, um, it's going to happen throughout the year. Nonetheless, what they're saying here is don't question this connection. I feel that for a lot of you guys, this is destined. Now, for the month of November, we have the Two of Pentacles and the Ten of Swords. I feel that this is you balancing your energy, perhaps from the fears and insecurities that are starting to come up in the month of October. Uh, you're going into realization and knowing that this is a toxic trait of yours. Uh, this could be a pattern that you have a tendency of doing. However, I feel that you feel this connection on a very deeper level, that it's going to keep you in check, and that you're going to do that internal healing to be able to end this toxic trait, to be able to release this blockage so that it doesn't affect your love life, which is a very positive thing. Now, finally, for the month of December, we have here the King of Wands and the Seven of Pentacles. 
You may be dealing with a fire energy for the month of December. For some of you guys, this is an offer that's coming in in regards to business or in regards to your career. Uh, it could be coming through from a fire energy. This is a person that is going to bring some type of financial advancement for your career or for your business. This could be an internship for some of you guys, for others of you. I feel that it has more to do with the partnership. So it could be like uh, that they put the majority of the capital in regards to a business um, and you are basically the one that's going to bust your ass. But I feel that it's really going to come at perfect timing because this is you taking it to the next level. The King of Wands can also represent your energy and the King of Wands is all to do with confidence. It's all to do with um, being aggressive when it comes to business and not sitting back waiting things to, you know, pretty much land in your lap. This is you going out there and making it happen and having the opportunity in December to sit back and count your blessings or be able to sit back and see how much you have grown this year of 2021. All right, my lovelies, I hope you guys enjoyed these readings. <clears throat> I hope it serves you well. I hope that you guys have an amazing holidays. I wish you guys the very best. Definitely let me know if you guys enjoyed these readings so that we can continue doing them for next year. I wish you guys the very best. Best of luck to all of you. I love you guys. Happy holidays and I'll see you guys soon. Bye.